Well, I'd like to welcome you back to What's Up with Prophecy Today. We're going to take a look at God's salvation plan that I have broken down into four steps, four strat uh, stages, if you will. And the first stage was before man was created. And we've, we've covered that in a video all, already. Now we're about to get into the stage two, which I call the teaching plan. And that was has to do with the tabernacle in the desert. So we're going to be looking at the tabernacle. Now, the tabernacle was situated uh, amongst the 12 tribes in Israel. And here you can see a picture of it with the tabernacle in the middle and a, uh, all the tents that were situated around it. Now, the place that where the animals were sacrificed is in the center uh, of the uh, courtyard, and it was a bronze altar, and they would bring their sacrificial uh, animal there, and it would be sacrificed. Now, in our next video, I'm going to get involved with this entire uh, tabernacle and go through that with you, but I want to just, uh, my goal today is just to show you that animals were sacrificed to God all the way from the Garden of Eden. So, as I mentioned, the uh, the altar, it was in the courtyard, and that's where the sacrifices were uh, taken place. So, in fact, there were sacrifices and altars all the way from the Garden of Eden. Now, we're going to start off here with the Garden of Eden, and uh, in Genesis 2, verses 16 and 17, we read this, But the Lord God warned you, you may freely eat of the fruit of every tree in the garden except the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And if you eat of that tree, God said you will surely die. Of course, Jesus stepped in the way as soon as Adam and Eve sinned, and he uh, took on the punishment that we deserve. So uh, we go ahead and look in Genesis 2 verses 21, and it says, The Lord God made clothing from animal skins for Adam and Eve. Well, you might ask, well, why did they need to have uh, animal clothing or any clothing? Well, when they learned about good and evil from uh, eating the fruit of that tree, they realized that they were naked, and God realized that too. So he realized, God realized that they had broken his commandment his, and ate from the tree of good and evil. So he, and he knew that they felt that they were naked. So the Lord God actually uh, got a lamb and uh, killed it and skinned the animal for the uh, animal skins to clothe Adam and Eve. So that's what he did. So Jesus sacrificed a, a, a lamb to make clothing for Adam and Eve. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at Adam and Eve's two ch kids, Cain and Abel. And we find this in uh, Genesis 4. And when they had grown up, Abel became a shepherd, while Cain cultivi cultivated the ground. And when it was time for the harvest, Cain presented some of his crops as a gift to the Lord. But Abel was different. Abel followed the directions that he was uh, given from his mo mother and father, Cain, uh, Adam and Eve. So Abel also brought a gift, the best portion of the firstborn lambs from his uh, flock. And the Lord accept accepted Abel and his gift, but did not accept Cain and his gift from the, the uh, garden of vegetables. So this is the first time that we see, besides uh God giving it, uh, Adam and Eve a, a, a coat from an, a lamb. This is where we see the, that uh, service was passed on to their children. But unfortunately, uh, Cain, the oldest, did not follow the directions that were given him. He, he gave crops where his younger brother brought a sacrifice. So let's now take a look at Mo uh, Noah. We find in Genesis 8, verses 18 to 21, it says here, So Noah and his wife and his sons and their wives left the boat. So they all got off the boat. There were eight people. 
and all of the large and small animals and the birds came out of the boat pair by pair. So here we find the boat landed on dry ground and all the animals left the ark and Noah and his family left the ark also. So what did Noah do immediately? Noah built an altar for the Lord and there he sacrificed as, as burnt offerings the lambs and birds that had been provided for that purpose. So what did God say? And the Lord was pleased with the aroma from the sacrifices. So Noah, even after the flood, when he landed on dry land, the first thing he did was build an altar and, and sacrificed animals to God on that altar. Now let's move ahead to Abraham. Well, Abraham initially was called Abram, and this is in Genesis 12 verses 7 to 9. And then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, Give this land to your descendants. So Abram built an altar there and dedicated it to the Lord. So after Abram set up camp with Bethel and Ai, there he built another altar and dedicated it to the Lord, and he worshipped God. So here we see the follow-on uh, history in the Bible where another altar is built. Now Abraham also followed God's direction. In Genesis 22 we uh, look at a very uh, touching and very famous uh, passage in the Bible. Many sermons have been preached on this and uh, we read in 1 to 13 here, Take your son, your only son, yes Isaac, whom you love so much, Go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will show you. So this is what God told to Abraham. Take your most beloved son, Isaac, who they had waited for years for, and actually sacrifice him. That means that he would kill him. So they, Abraham got his son and got the fire and the wood. But Isaac, his son, said to his father, We have the fire and the wood. But the boy said, Where are the sheep? Where is the sheep for the burnt offering? And Abraham answered, and This is the trust that he had in God. God will provide a sheep for the burnt offering, my son. So that's what he did. He found uh, in the thicket, Abraham saw a lamb. So the angel said to Abraham, Don't lay a hand on the boy. Don't Do not harm him in any way way. For now I know that you are, you truly fear God and you have not withheld anything from me, even your son, your only son. So God saw that Abraham was uh, worshiping him and trusted in him and, and obeyed him. So then Abraham looked up and he saw a ram caught by its horns in a thicket. So he took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering in place of his son. Amazing, isn't it? So the Lord said to Abraham, Because you have obeyed me and have not withheld even your son, your only son, I swear by my own name that I will certainly bless you and I will multiply your descendants beyond measure like the stars in the sky or the sand on the beach. So this was a, a famous uh, thing that Abraham did. This is in uh, Genesis 26, and from there, Isaac moved to uh, Bathsheba, where the Lord appeared to him. And the Lord said, I am the God of your father, Abraham, he said. Do not be afraid, for I am with you and will bless you. I will multiply your descendants, and they will become a great nation. And wh why did God do this? He said, I will do this because of my promise to your father Abraham, my servant. Then Isaac built an altar there and worshiped God. So again, we see a continuation of worshiping God through uh, sacrifices and altars being built. Now, let's take a look at the Jewish nation. They were taken hostage and they had 400 years of bondage uh, in, under the Egyptians. 
So we read here in uh, Exodus 8, 25 to uh, uh, 28. So the Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron. And what did he say? He said, all right, go ahead and offer sacrifices to your God. But Moses replied, that would not be right. The Egyptians detest the sacrifices that we offer to the Lord our God. And then he said, look, we must take a three-day trip into the wilderness to offer sacrifices in the Lord our God, just as uh, his uh, command commanded us to do. So he said to Miro, we've got to go into the wilderness for three days and we will do our sacrifices there. So the Pharaoh said, all right, go ahead. I will let you go into the wilderness to offer sacrifices to the Lord your God. Again, even after 400 years of bondage, they are, were still uh, remembering the, that they should offer sacrifices and build an altar to God. Well, we're going to cover the tabernacle in much more detail in the next uh, couple of videos. But I wanted to c touch on a couple of things here. In Genesis 25, verses 8 and 9, we read, Have the people of Israel build me a holy sanctuary so that I can live among them. You must build this tab tabernacle and its furnishings exactly according to the pattern I will show you. So this was God speaking to Moses, and he gave him the, the pattern for the whole uh, sanctuary and its furnishings, all the various furnitures and altars. So we read again in uh, Genesis 27, verses 1 to 7. So using a cater wood and construct, construct a square altar, make horns for each of its four corners, overlay the altar with bronze. That's so it won't burn up. And make, an, make ash buckets, shovels, basins, and meat forks and fire pans, make them all out of bronze. And, uh, and, and, for, and they also, God also told them to put bronze rings on the four corners of the altar so that they could slip uh, wood in there and carry them uh, around. So, he, so Moses built it just as, or God said, build it just as you were shown on the mountain, which he did. And we will be getting into this in much more detail in our next video. Uh, so uh, keep uh, watching for that. Well, the daily sacrifice was reestablished. In Nehemiah, when the temple was built in Nehemiah's ta time, we read, we have cast sacred lots to determine when, at, re at regular times each year, the family uh, of the priests, the, the Levites, and the common people should bring wood to God's temple and be burned on the altar of, of the Lord our God, as it is written in the law. So all the way forward to Nehemiah's temple, we again see that God had an altar in the temple where they would burn sacrifices. So we can see from this brief overview that God established the sacrificial altars uh, all the way from the time of Adam and Eve. Now, after Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 AD, uh, there were no more further sacrifices offered by the Jewish nation. And why was that? Why was there no more sacrifices offered? Well, we read in Hebrews 9, Verse 28, it says, So also Christ was offered on the cross in 30 AD. I added that. Once for all time as a sacrifice to take away the sins of many people. So when Jesus came to this earth and lived a sinless life and was sacrificed uh, through our accepting his sacrifice, we, uh, we obtain uh, eternal life with him. But here again, because the, the sacrifices in the Old Testament on the various uh, uh, temples in the desert and others, other temples, those were all looking forward 
to Christ's coming and for him to be once and for all time as a sacrifice for us. So isn't that wonderful news that we read from the Bible? So we can see that animal sacrifices and uh, the altars uh, came initially at the Garden of Eden and continued for thousands of years all the way up to the time Jesus was crucified. And at that point in time when he was crucified, there was no need for sacrifices anymore. And even to this very day, the Jewish nation does not sacrifice animals uh, like they did before Christ came and was our sacrifice for all times. Well, that's about it. So I hope you've gotten a blessing from this video. And uh, if you did, I would appreciate it if you would hit the like button. This would give YouTube the uh, reasons to have these videos show up for other people's searches. Well, thanks again, and God bless each one of you.